Hi, this is um, Edna Becerra with the Office of um, Admission here at Whittier College. We're joined by Professor Peter Peterson um, in the chemistry department, who is going to share information about the chemistry program at Whittier College. Um, Professor Peterson, would you just go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Yeah, um, so I am a, like Edna said, a professor in the chemistry department. Uh, I got my bachelor's degrees at, in chemistry and physics at Eastern Washington University, which is a similar to the Cal State uh, system for local folks. Um, and then I did my PhD at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, um, looking at atmospheric chemistry in the Arctic. Um, and a three-year stint at University of Michigan um, before joining the faculty here, and I have been here five years. Awesome. We're glad to have you. We, we know that Whittier College is, is known for personalized attention, small classes, um, accessibility to professors, but tell us uh, what, what sets Whittier's chemistry department and program apart from from other schools? Yeah, um, so I think right off the bat, our general chemistry sections are capped at 24, which is way smaller than you're going to find on the CSU system. And, uh, you know, when I was at Michigan, uh, the general chemistry classes were about 500 people. So, uh, whoa. Uh, the other thing is we use research grade instrumentation in all our lab experiences. So every student gets to touch instrumentation that is used in industry, in uh, research at bigger places. Um, so, um, and a lot of times when you go to bigger schools, you get to learn about that instrumentation, but it's a look, don't touch thing. Um, oh. So we, uh, you know, uh, all our chem majors learn high pressure liquid chromatography. They all uh, touch a UV vis, a research grade UV vis, not just the little bench top thing. Um, so that's, uh, I think, the big um, thing that sets us apart. That's that's impressive. Um, and is this accessible to to any student in the major? Can they come in and? you know, conduct their own research um, on this equipment, or is it part of a class usually? Um, uh, it's both. Okay. It's both. Yeah, um, so we all on the department, uh, there's three other colleagues and I, we all mentor students in the lab in research um, as all chemistry majors as part of their senior capstone experience, design their own research project, um, and present that to their peers, um, to their families, uh, to the broader faculty. Um, so research and teaching through research is a big part of what we do here at Whittier. Love it. I love it. Tell me, um, you know, what does, so first of all, you know, Whittier doesn't require students to declare a major. Right, right off the bat, they we we give them about two years to figure out what their passion is, what they really want to study, and with the help of their faculty advisor, they they have they figure it out. Um, if a student were to declare a chemistry major, declare themselves as a, ch a chemistry major, first year, first day of college, um, or if they're a transfer student or if they declare their major at the end of their sophomore year, you know, what do those different paths look like for a chemistry major? Yeah, um, so I think right off, if you know you're a chem major right off the bat, uh, you start off in general chemistry. Um, always tell my students to um, take whatever math they're uh, qualified for because all our chemistry degrees require you to go up through uh, Calc 2. Um, so, and then I often tell, um, depending on interests, I tell my students or recommend my students take uh, more math than that. Um, as it, it, it can be helpful, but it's not. 
Um, but I also tell students who are maybe math adverse, there's a lot of ways to be a chemist. And yeah. there are professional chemists, very well respected Nobel laureates that break into a cold sweat when they're asked to do a simple like dilution calculation. So there's lots of ways to be a chemist and high level math is not always part of the plan. Um, and then transfer um, coming in, it really depends on what you've been able to take at, um, you know, at your community college. Um, most community colleges will give you the option to have taken your gen chem sequence there. Uh, in that case, you could start right in organic chemistry um, and uh, move on from there. Um, and uh, you, if you're maybe late getting into chemistry, you know, you can wait until your second year to take general chemistry and still finish up, um, you know, a chemistry degree. I have a couple students uh, that I advise who came late to it. And I'm honestly always trying to convince pre-meds that they should be biochem majors and not biology majors. So, you know, we okay. get a, a lot of folks either adding the chem major on or converting over. How does that work out with your biochem? Is that is that a, a designed major or are they double majoring in, in biology and chemistry? Uh, so it's a separate major. It's actually at Whittier, the biochemistry uh, degree has the most overlap with the med school admission requirements. Um, so it's the neatest overlap to get all your requirements uh, done is the biochemistry degree. Uh, so we actually do have a lot of students double major in biochemistry and biology. Oh, wow. That's super yeah. impressive. What are some other interesting combinations that, that you've come across um, with, with students double majoring in chemistry and something else? Uh, I've seen chemistry and business. Um, I have an advisee right now. Uh, it's not a double major, but she's minoring in sociology. Um, okay. With her chemistry degree. Um, so, uh and then we also, uh, we do have a three two chemistry program where you can do your first three years here and then transfer to an engineering school um, to uh, complete your engineering degree. Uh, we've had students go to uh, USC. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had a student go to Columbia to finish out their engineering degree. Um, and then you have also your bachelor's degree from Whittier as well. Nice. And and we do have um, a, a recording of an info session with Professor Lagan, who um, spoke at length about um, the 3-2 engineering program. Um, so anyone watching this can can navigate over to that on the YouTube channel or on um, or on the physics, uh, the, sorry, the engineering page on, on the website. Um, now, you described a variety of, of disciplines and majors there. What do chemistry majors, and especially students who have gotten real creative, right? Chemistry and sociology, chemistry and business. What do what your students go on to do with, with their degrees in, in chemistry? Yeah, um, so we have um, a wide variety, I think. Uh, for the, a lot of our um, graduates end up doing more school, um, whether that's um, medical school, dental school. Um, we do have graduate people doing graduate uh, work in chemistry. Um, the nice thing about graduate school in chemistry or any of the physical sciences is it's free and you get paid to go. Um, so, uh, that's a nice part of it. And then, um, you know, there's a wide variety, uh, Southern California is home to a thriving, uh, pharmaceutical industry. So there's lots of opportunities in, uh, local laboratories to get your foot in the door. Um, there's, uh, have a former student who's working for an analytical, lab up in the Bay Area, um, environmental consulting, uh, it's 
another path um, that people take. Um, and um, there's just with a chemistry degree in general, you know, you don't necessarily, um, you're not going to be locked in a lab the rest of your life. There's a lot of paths you can take with it. Um, not, I don't necessarily know. I haven't been here that long, so my uh, list of alumni is not necessarily <laughs> as long as some of my other colleagues, but I know um, I, a former colleague uh, decided to go to law school and get into patent wow. law. Um, Ooh, that's super interesting. Um, so having said all that, what, what makes, um, what, what type of student typically majors in chemistry or what makes someone successful as a chemistry major? Um, I, I think, uh, it certainly helps if you're, um, you know, willing to keep um, sticking with it when something doesn't come easy to you. Um, you know, you're gonna, and this isn't necessarily just a chemistry thing, this is a college thing, right? You're gonna hit that class where uh, it's not coming as easy to you as it maybe some other stuff has. Uh, and you're gonna have to have sort of that tenacity and resilience to push through because uh, you can get it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like everyone can um, with enough time and help be a chemist. Right. Um, and it's um, but also I think a aspect that's not really talked about as much as maybe it should be is uh, creativity. Right. Mm. Science. Um, you really need to be creative um, in thinking about projects and thinking about how to approach um you know, a synthesis or an analysis, uh, coming up with new approaches, and then, uh, you know, telling people about what you found and why your work is interesting. Yeah, yeah. And I assume that's a big part of what students learn here at Whittier is learning to communicate their their findings and explain it to non-scientific folks. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, even just having those com conversations with your peers is helpful in that regard, right? Yeah. Um, because, you know, not everybody's a you know, science major, so getting that practice. Um, but we have presentations in uh, most of our classes, uh, have some sort of um, science communication, both written and oral. Um, and then uh, a lot of our students um, have the opportunity to present at national conferences. Uh, so national meetings, they go, they present their research. Um, last year, I uh, had a student present their work at the, well, we had three students in the department go down to San Diego, the American mm -hmm. Chemical Society National Meeting and present uh, their work there. They did here at Whittier. Um, hoping to have a couple students go up to San Francisco next year to present work, the stuff they're working on right now at Whittier. That's amazing. And are those are those um, um, conferences and events something that the students have to pay for, or does the college provide financial support so that they can go present the project? Yeah, no, uh, no, students don't don't pay. Um, the uh, college uh, and the department uh, fund all of that. Uh, I just got a five year grant from NASA to fund uh, and pay students to do research with me and also cover their uh, conference to travel to go present their work. Very cool. And and I want to to since since you mentioned it, um, I'm tell us more about about your grant your nasa grant and and the work that you're doing with you know there yeah uh so um we are getting two uh new instruments installed on campus this month uh that students will be able to use to measure pollution in the atmosphere uh so if you've ever wondered why uh 
LA has that lovely brown coloration to the sky all the time. Uh, we look at that, um, and NASA's also launched, has, um, uses a few different satellites to look at that pollution from space. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we are joining their ground-based network to sort of ev evaluate those measurements and how effective they are um, from space. Uh, and trying to see if we can get at, um, you know, uh, some of the mechanisms or how um, pollution in Whittier that hasn't really been looked at a lot um, maybe differs from the rest of uh, LA County, um, some of these right. larger um, metropolitan areas. Yeah, yeah, that's fascinating. And I, I'm eager to to hear more about it when, you know, as you make progress on, on that project, that sounds really, really cool. Anything NASA related is really, really cool. So, you know, having, having you uh, win and secure that NASA grant is, is super impressive. And I think I speak for the entire community when we're just, when I say that we're so proud, right? That, that's, that's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, it's a good opportunity even for students that aren't doing uh, research. Uh, we had, uh, we hosted uh, scientists from NASA actually last Thursday. Um, you know, he had lunch with uh, students. Uh, there were about 20, 25 students uh, oh, just wow. got to chat with him about his career path, life at NASA, you know, what the day-to-day -day life of being a scientist at NASA is like. That's really, really cool. I love it. I love it. Um, you you talked uh, talked about um, students, you know, just as a general tip, coming in with, you know, or, or, or building tenacity and perseverance and, and really um, putting in the work when a class seems challenging or is challenging. What kind of support do you and your colleagues and, 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 the college community in general offers students, right? What does that look like? Is is it is it does it look like asking for tutoring or going to the Center for Academic Success or booking office hours with you? What does that look like? If if someone's really struggling with a class and just not getting it, what options can they tap into? Uh, yeah, it's definitely an all of the above uh, thing. We uh, definitely we have the tutoring available in uh, CAS for chemistry. Um, but, you know, all of my colleagues, uh, you know, our doors are open. We encourage you to come by. Uh, you know, uh, students have access to my calendar. They can book times with me or if they are just wandering by in the hallway and see my door open, you know, they'll come in, they'll open their laptop. They'll be like, Hey, I'm really struggling with this uh, lab analysis. Um, can you help me? Uh, and um, that sometimes, uh, you know, I'll notice a student maybe isn't um, doing so well and also isn't necessarily reaching out. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll um, reach out to that. Uh, and that's one of the advantages of being a small place, right? I know who yeah. you are and I can, you know, make sure, you know, you're getting, uh, you know, what resources are available. Uh, you know, I uh, was upstairs in the lab and on the way back to my office, I ran into a student who was working on her post lab and needed help. And I stopped and helped her for 15 minutes. You know, Very it sounds cool. just things like that. A lot of help very, available. Very cool. So chemistry, you know, as a non-STEM person, chemistry just sounds so intimidating and challenging. And I don't think I ever learned how to balance a chemical equation in high school chem. <laughs> um, but what do you say to students who, who might be considering chemistry, but are intimidated by it? And, and and hear like just really scary things about things like organic chemistry and calculus too. What do you what do you say to students in that situation? Um, you know, I think 
the biggest thing is uh don't tell yourself like you can't do something right i think a lot of times um people get sort of conditioned pretty early on to like oh i suck at math right like you had a bad experience at some point or you just struggled and didn't you know get the help you need but uh, like that doesn't mean you're inherently not up to up to it right it just yeah. means you haven't found the right support structure that works for you to be successful um and the other thing i encourage people to remember is it's, you're not the only one you know no one's naturally uh gifted at chemistry and just gets it the first time you know i mean i'm a professor and i got a c in gen chem lab my <laughs> freshman year like it, it happens um so i think just being um okay or you know pushing yourself to try it um and then like i tell my students there's lots of ways to be a chemist if you don't like this one class uh try you know a lot of students they try another class with um my colleague in another uh area of chemistry and they love it and they stay in the major and they uh go on to be successful so um there's lots of different ways to be a chemist i think the biochemistry degree is the um degree at whittier that overlaps the most with all the um med school, dental school, pharmacy school, um, what they like to see in their applicants. Um, and, you know, it's, I think, easy as a pre-med or a pre-health person to just get sort of this tunnel vision on your biology and chemistry. But, uh, you know, your creativity, um, your those other classes um, in the humanities and the arts, uh, all very important very important uh, and actually um you know i have uh, students who really enjoyed their sociology classes and it's really changed how they approach um their chemistry um and their sort of their professional goals in medicine you you talked about research and 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 student involvement right in in chemistry is there an honor society or or a club where um experimentation and discovery can happen without like the 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 boundaries of a class um so we don't have one uh specifically for chemistry um you know i think there's a pre-health club on campus mm -hmm. uh there's the women in stem club uh mm -hmm. on campus um that sort of provides that community and connection um but um, the other nice thing about Whittier uh, is you really start to, um, in your second year in the chemistry major, um, you all sort of realize who's taking the same classes, right? And you start to really cohort up uh, in that way. So even though there's not a formal structure, um, there is that cohorting, there is that uh, community uh, that's a big part of what we do in the department that's so important for sure um would you mind telling me a little bit about so we have you know at least a dozen different fellowship programs on campus that that pay students right to conduct research um, a project of their design and their choice but tell us a little bit more about the types of projects that you've been involved with um through a student's fellowship um and and basically how the fellowships work at Whittier yeah so uh fellowships are paid research uh over the summer uh you know it's a few thousand dollars um to uh you know for you to really just not deal with classes or you know we have a lot of athletes who want to do research um, but have a hard time balancing all of that. So summer is really a time where you can just do that. Um, and, you know, you design uh, your own project. So uh, one of my students, uh, she's designed a project to use satellite 
um, measurements of air pollution to examine disparity, potential disparities between lower and higher income areas around Whittier and see um, if she can use the satellite data to shed more light on uh, potential inequities in air pollution exposure. Um, so um, that's um, the proposal that she wrote, and uh, she just submitted it. Uh, so fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, it's uh, and you um, even as a first year, you apply to fellowships. There's uh, we have the Fletcher Jones uh, Research Fellowship that reserves a certain fraction of their slots for first and second year students. So it is never too early to yeah. get involved. And uh, yeah. Very cool. Thank you for that. I, I think that those fellowships are such a such a point of pride for Whittier as well, being able to provide students with the opportunities to to earn um, a stipend, you know, earn some money and 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 pursue passion projects is a pretty big deal. Um, we have about four minutes left on the clock, literally, because today our Zoom accounts are being limited to 40 minutes. Um, but before we sign off, tell us a little bit about what's ahead for the chemistry department, what's ahead for you in your work, your research, and do you have any exciting classes coming up, any study abroad courses coming up? Um, so in terms of new things coming up, we, uh, I'm offering an environmental chemistry uh, class for the um, first time in a while. Um, so, and that's gonna enable students that are interested um, in uh, environmental chemistry to maybe self-design a major, major in environmental chemistry through the Whittier Scholars Program. Um, so um, that's something we're excited about. We're cool. working on developing um, integrated computer science chemistry um, major. Uh, we're Whoa. hoping to get that um, in the next couple of years. Uh, it sort of uh, depends on if we can offer the computer science classes we need to put mm -hmm. that together, but that's something we're working on. Um, uh, I'm personally uh, involved with a big um, airborne um, atmospheric measurement campaign. Um, uh, it's both uh, over a few major metropolitan areas around uh, the United States, but we'll be making measurements on the Whittier campus and also uh, just outside uh, New York City uh, to oh, wow. help out. Um, with that, and students will be involved in making those measurements, analyzing those data. Um, so we're going to have Whittier results. students traveling to New York? Uh, no, just the no. instruments going, then they'll that process is. it when they uh, come <laughs> back. The notice was kind of too short uh, to get funding together to um, move students or have students go uh, into the field. Um, but I'm um, I am hoping to submit some grant proposals to have students go into the field. Um, you know, uh, that that is a goal. Yes. That'll be cool. Students That'll be so so doing cool. The work. Awesome. Well, we're we're pretty much out of time um, this evening. Thank you so so much for for making time to to sit with us and and answer questions for anybody watching. Um, again, feel free to reach out, um, admission at whittier.edu, and someone will be sure to uh, respond quickly, um, put you in touch with Professor Peterson or anybody else on campus that, um, you know, that you want to Emails on the department website, you know, feel yeah. free. Yeah. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again. Um, have a good night.